welcome to all of you who are listening on the radio or watching the video. My name is Joel Benson, and I serve as the pastor of Trinity Lutheran Church in Butler, Pennsylvania. We are celebrating a service of the word with you today. If you are one of our members, we mailed you the bulletin so that you can follow along. Please sing and pray along with us. Again, we thank you for your kind words that you have shared with us this past week about our efforts and how they have been important to you. Your kindness means a great deal to all of us who are helping to share the word with you each week. A couple things that are in the bulletin I do want to call your attention to. Um, one is that the Sunday school information that is in there about the Spark House videos that are available for um, families, please take a note of that. Also, there's an announcement in the bulletin about the Lutherland baked goods. They are going to be selling cookies um, and the coffee cake that is so famous at Lutherland to, uh, to folks, and that information is in the bulletin. And then also, um, if you are graduating from high school or from college this year, please uh, send in that information to us. Um, we are going to try to put together something for uh, those who are graduating. Um, so if you send in that information, then we can make sure um, that happens. Um, we thank you for your continued uh, financial support of us and the work we are doing. If you are watching on Facebook, please like and share the videos. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to our channel so that you can get updates when other worship or devotional videos are posted. These days are hard, and I know how much we all want to get back to worshiping together. And please know the Worship and Music Committee and Council have been talking about how to do that safely. We have been wrestling with these decisions, and they are not easy to make. And there are a lot of things that we need to think about and think clearly through and think about how these have an impact on the most vulnerable among us. Look for some information coming out after council meets um, next week. We are going to post a video that has some of the realities that we will be facing as we come together uh, again. But as we continue on this path, we continue confident that Christ is with us and that Christ is guiding us. Let's take a moment to listen to some music and get our hearts and minds ready for worship. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin and in whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear people of God, hear the good news. Listen to God's voice. You are loved in the name of Jesus who has come among us. You are freed from proving that you deserve to be loved because God's love is given to you as the most precious gift of all. You are God's child. You are released from your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Rejoice in this love and share it with the world. Amen. Amen. of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children, and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the 17th chapter of Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, 
as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the third chapter of 1 Peter. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for, what, for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they for, fear and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned and those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once and for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. 
This sanctuary in which we are gathered is the most beautiful of the sanctuaries in any of the congregations that I have served. The light that streams in, the windows, the expansiveness of it, the sense that we get of the majesty of God, of God's presence with us, of the focus on Jesus, the Good Shepherd, all work together to make this a beautiful spot for worship, a place where we can come together and be focused on the word and sent back out into the world. Well, even as you might imagine this place and what it means to you, or other places where you may have gathered for worship, and you think about those places and what they have meant to you, we are reminded by Paul in his letter to Acts, or Luke in his letter to Acts, about some reminders of how we are to hold on to these things. He says to us, The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands. And in verse 29, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. These verses come alive for us this year because we cannot gather in this worship space we cannot gather in any worship spaces right now to be nurtured in the way that we are most comfortable and are most familiar. But we hear here in this book a reminder about God being with us, that God is with us when we are not in this place. So just like last week, and I'm not sure why I keep thinking this way, I thought of a camp song last week. This reading brought to mind another camp song for me, and it's the song, We Are the Church. It was written by Jay Beach, and Jay came to Lutherland the first summer that Randy Gullickson was the director, and he was there for the senior high camp that year, and Mindy and I got an opportunity to spend a great deal of time with him. He came back the next year as well. And so this song that he wrote has stuck with me for years and has reminded me at times about what is said here in the book of Acts. The chorus to the song goes like this. We are the church, the body of our Lord. We are all God's children, and we have been restored. And the verses, the church is not a building where people go to pray, it's not made of sticks and stones, and it's not made out of clay. You can go to worship, but you cannot go to church. You can't find a building that's alive, no matter where you search. The church is not a business, a committee, or a board. It's not a corporation for the business of our Lord. The church is the people living out their lives, called, enlightened, sanctified for the work of of Jesus Christ. Those words remind us of what we hear from Paul in this sermon, that it is from God who gives us life and breath and all things, and he is not far from each one of us, and in him we live and move and have our being. Paul reminds us that we are the church now, watching on the other end of this video stream, watching wherever it is that you find yourself. We are the people of God now, living out our faith in our homes and in our communities. We are wearing masks because we are concerned for the most vulnerable among us. We are donating to agencies and institutions that are supporting those who are the poorest among us and those who are the most vulnerable. We are giving of ourselves in different ways, not coming together here in worship, but we are no less the church, no less 
the people of God, and the Spirit of our God is with us. He goes with us wherever we are to inspire us, to guide us, to do those loving things that we have been called to do by Christ. The commandment that we have heard again and again in John's gospel over these weeks is there to remind us. We are called to be the church, to be called, enlightened, sanctified for the work of Jesus Christ to love our neighbors. Amen. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living with one another in trust and hope, we now proclaim our faith. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, 
in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We give you thanks, O God, for your presence among us and that we cannot escape from your love. We thank you for the blessings of spring and the renewal of the earth. We give you thanks for those helping with this worship. We give thanks for those working in health care and those who have recovered from COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Eternal God, amid all the turmoil and changes of the world, your love is steadfast and your strength never fails. In these days, be to us a sure guardian and rock of defense. Guide leaders to be mindful to follow your ways of working together and loving service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, be with the 30 million people who are without work these days, many without insurance and still waiting for unemployment. Many of those wonder if they will have jobs to go back to and if they will be able because of those they live with and care for. Bless them to know your presence and strength in these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, Give skill, sympathy, and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those who are searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work, many will be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting loving arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort, heal, restore, and give strength to those we name out loud and silently in our hearts. Jordan, Nona, Marianne, Mary Jo, Linda, Barb, Julie, John, Barb and Bob, Jennifer, Earl, Sabrina, Corinne, Major, Ruth, Jay, Karen, Ruth, John, Mary Ann, Fred, Kathleen, Karen, Frida, Greg, Logan, Bruce, Lydia, Cheryl, Pearl, Earl, George, Cleora, Joan, Gary, Mary, and Buddy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, be with all who struggle with despair and are considering or have considered suicide. Give them hope. Console those who mourn losses from this tragedy and assure any who doubt that the souls of those who die by suicide are safe in you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, and work among those who lead your church, Pastor Benson and Diane, and for our bishops, Elizabeth and Kurt, their assistants, and the balm pastors, that we might know how to serve and lead in these uncertain days and beyond. Lift leaders up in all the Baum congregations to do the ministry you have called us to. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty One, unite our hearts with the 82,000 people grieving in the United States and the 286,000 people around the world mourning the death of those they love. When one of us suffers, we all suffer. Restore our joy through the promise of the resurrection, for you are the way, truth, and life 
for us here and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah.